This is Mongolia Mindset, and today we got C.S. Joseph um, and his mentor with us. This is going to be something that actually changes the entire MBTI uh, community. So let us uh, drop some comments if you like what we're doing here. Uh, we hope to have C.S. Joseph on a lot more, right? Um, yeah. How you feel about CSJ? The guy knows his stuff, okay? Um, he's a smart guy, and he's been, he's been revolutionizing typology for quite a bit now. Um, and his mentor is here. Um, his name is Robert Bryan. So um, I don't think he's been on a channel in quite a bit. So this is a true treat for you guys. And as always, we got Christian here. Christian, anything you want to say? Yeah, I just want to say, you know, we're glad to have uh, C.S. Joseph here. You know, say what you want about him. But a lot of people discovered typology through this guy right here. So if you like the video, go ahead and watch this once, twice, three, and drop like a thousand likes. It's going to keep bringing the good content to you guys, okay? Let's go. Okay. Awesome. Uh, see you, Jake. Anything you want to say before we get into this? Uh, I am very I, I am very happy to be here. Uh, and uh, I, I, I do not have beef with Mercer. And uh, <laughs> him and I are cool, so anyone else could just shut the hell up about that. And uh, otherwise, I, I am happy to be on the show more often. I think uh, having a more uh, concrete current events uh, direction uh, that Mercer had suggested that we do in the future and actually talking about issues and what's actually going on in the news and uh, from a typology perspective, I think is entirely valuable and something that needs to happen. And hopefully uh, we can have uh, me on and on your guys' show uh, more often to accomplish that. I think that would be absolutely fantastic. So let's do it. Yeah, yeah. All right. And, uh, Mr. Uh, Robert Bryan, you got anything you want to say before you get into it? Um, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, this is uh, kind of my YouTube debut, so you know I haven't uh, officially uh, done anything via YouTube, though that is our trajectory, and uh, we're now building our sets, and uh, we'll be launching uh, probably first of the year um, the full-blown um, channel. Um, Herosense.com is the name of my website. It's still in development. And uh, it's been around for uh, 15 years, <laughs> kind of in the state it's in. Um, uh, there is the grid that I originally put together to help me. Um, I do what's called, well, I do field typing. So I can, I can go out and um, find people on the street anywhere and just start a conversation with them and basically, you know, give them a nice show and share secrets of their soul and uh, share healing words and affirming words and tell them what I find beautiful about them and their personality. And uh, um, it's very effective. And through years of doing this, um, I've developed a, a very um, solid set of data. I'm actually have an IT background, so I'm a big data head. And uh, I've been doing IT um, for three decades plus. So this has always been sort of a side thing for me, though I'm in media and all that with, with computer side of things. I've not wanted to come out too early or too quick with my own show per se and not really know what I was talking about all the way and get halfway into it and regret half the things that I was saying five years later. So what I've done is spent a lot of time really flushing out personality knowledge and becoming very intimate with the way that people like it shared um, and the words, the terminology that, that should be used to allow many different personality types to accept what you're saying so that you can discuss it in a group environment without offending anybody. And we all know how easy to offend This is everybody. not what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is, a, this is <laughs> Chase was a few 15 years ago, right? So when, when we hung out. Yeah. Um, but I've done a lot of refining to um, the process and uh, 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 so I'm ready to share, you know, uh, answer any questions or contribute and listen also to what you guys are doing. It's really exciting to see so many people starting to believe in this. Um, when I first started doing it, I was just trying to convince people it was real. Um, it took me a, a, a good eight years to fully, uh, fully believe in it. Um, you know, I, was, uh, I started doing this in about 2002. Oh, wow. And then from there, I really uh, just glommed onto it and, and it's been my, my never ending goal to master um, personality knowledge for the sake of understanding personal traumas, understanding other human beings and how, why they do what they do. Because prior to this knowledge, people frustrated me endlessly. 
Mm. And they don't behave any better than they used to. But I certainly understand why now they do what they do. And it takes a lot of the pressure off. And it also um, allows me to know which things uh, people are allowed to do and I should never get offended by, even if I don't prefer it, and which things I'm allowed to do because there are certain things every personality type does and you can't tell them not to do that because they all do it. And so I've, I've collected tons of data on this. It's all live field data um, with real people. Um, I tried to stay a lot out of the theory and of you know deep nerdy psychology and terms. So I also have my own way of speaking about this, which is based in much more human terms. I don't tend to use SE. I'll say, you know, extroverted sensation. Or I don't say INTJ, I'll say strategist. So I, I use human terms to try to humanize this and talk about it at like an eighth grade level because I've been successful at conveying all of these messages to people that are um, in eighth grade at, at you know, 13, 14 years old if you just don't get too complicated with it. Mm. Um, these are, it's our humanity we're talking about. We all have humanity very young. So that's, uh, I guess, the spin that I see the different way I'm approaching this versus what I've seen so far out there on the internet. And thank you for the opportunity to kind of share some of that. I can tell you INFJ, there's a lot of uh, <laughs> FE and ethical stuff there and TI understanding. And then remember in the process with the progression, yeah, I got, got INFJ. Um, I appreciate so, you saying that you use more practical terms to describe some of these things because yes. I myself in the past have said that sometimes the barrier of entry is just too high for people to just practically get into it. You know, unless you like really obsess over it, sometimes it's like the barrier right. is just way too high to like actually use it in any meaningful way. All right. I At agree. least that's what I tell Mercer often. Uh, so I appreciate you saying that, you know, it's helpful for the people to get into it by using more simple language, more practical language. Um, it's conversational and Many of the words I use, I've chosen based on how people react, not what I won't prefer. Mm. But I needed a uh, consensus among the group in order to discuss this publicly. One-on-one, -on -one, it was fine. But when I get into a group setting like this, mm. when you have 16 different personalities judging you, and there are two different sexes for a grand total of 32 different per personality point of views or cognitive awareness point of views, somebody's going to find an issue with you almost no matter what you do. And so it's been my real effort to knock off the rough edges and bring conversational um, Jungian psychology to bear so that we're talking to human beings about human issues, not, um, well, I'm a tech guy. I'm, I'm a really high-level tech guy, mm -hmm. um, and I know how to geek out. And I know that's not helpful when you're conveying it to the general audience. Mm -hmm. You have to boil things down. So I've tried to do that with type. Well, uh, as full transparency, me and Mercer are medical scientists. We do that as yeah. a career. So it's funny wow. you, you bring the IT background. We're bringing the medical background. Um, so awesome. how did how did you guys um how did you guys actually we, meet? We we did computer work together, because um, you know again I'm into computers. So for a time. Um, we both worked for the same guy and we worked together doing computer consulting. We worked for various, you know, government agencies and big businesses, Microsoft and, and whoever else in the Redmond um, and uh, Kirkland, Washington area. And uh, uh, I was quite the amateur when I met Chase and I was fully convinced it was real, but a lot of the way that I talked about type back then was to learn not to say I know mm -hmm. um, because I was still learning so much. And so I, I throw things out there like I knew, but it was to get people's feedback because I wasn't sure. But so, you know, it, it was a risky thing uh, emotionally to do. It, I'm not, I'm an introvert. So um, to put myself out there like that was a very uh, struggle, but um, the knowledge I got addicted to it and I, have never been able to stop thinking about it day and night practically since. And uh, so I've done a lot of uh, facial 
I, I'm excellent at facial recognition. Mm -hmm. So I believe just you, I haven't really had enough time probably to talk to you to type you with conversation, mm -hmm. but I believe you're a craftsman. You're an introverted sensing thinking perceiver. Yeah. Um, <laughs> would be my, my strong guess. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, um, I, I, I know, I know I've categorized facial features, mannerisms, uh, words, people choose, and I can type people now just talking to them over the phone. I can type them, um, facial features. I can type them with mannerisms and, and strangely enough, even the colors, their favorite colors. Mm -hmm. So I've determined that, uh, people's many of people's favorite color choices are determined by their personality. Um, so nature versus nurture, you know, you usually like the music you're exposed to when you're young, but per, people think they also pick what their favorite colors are. And I found there's strong correlations between type and uh, color. So like the overseer is my favorite example. Uh, they love black and uh, extroverted sensing, thinking, judging type, love black. And if I see a girl dressed in all black walking down the street, just from the rear, I'm already 90% sure she's an overseer. And when I get past her and I look, sure enough, you know, so to that degree, um, you can lock in some really small tells and clues that really give you strong and powerful evidence quickly. And this came from just years of, you know, I actually started out trying to develop a test to give people like, would you take this test for me, please? But I didn't want it to be some 100 page long test. So I was trying to boil it down to 30 questions. And in the process, I actually boiled it down to four questions. Are you an extrovert or are you an introvert? Are you judging or perceiving? Are you thinking or feeling? Are you sensing or intuition? And I could determine those things. I didn't need to give someone a test. And so then for a while, I was administering the Myers-Briggs test in a corporate environment. And I found that I was, I, at that time, I had become more accurate than the test, which was only about, they, they claimed two thirds accurate. So more and more it became, I, I, I could sit down with people and actually be more accurate than the test to the point now where I'm about 95 plus percent accurate. And the more time I spend with you, um, the more accurate I'll become, but I only need five to 10 minutes with most people and I've got a lock. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to ask you a question. How did you like, how did you fall into typology? You know, that's just not just like something, especially during your air, right? Because yeah. you said you, you've been doing it since 2002. Yeah. As the internet has grown, people have jumped in more into typology. Yes. So how did you get into it? Because back then, this is that was a very, um, I would say, more niche. It was. So I was born with computers. Computers and I were born at the same time. The microchip was invented around the time I was born. And... When I was seven years old, Atari was out and I was obsessed with it. I've been connected to every layer of technology that's ever existed that's worth anything, not mainframe stuff, who cares? But uh, PC on, I've been, I grew up with it all and I've missed none of it. So I grew up also with the internet and I saw the internet transform the world and I saw the traditional media get destroyed and I worked for a cable company that in 2002 that was destroying broadcast television and then i watched you know netflix and all that destroy uh cable you know it's 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 so i've been a part of all those evolutions and when the internet first came out i was, I was obsessed with it obviously and i had tons of technology and it, it was my craft it was my trade so likewise i was at work all day and i had the internet and i would search for this is when PayPal came out. This is when Gmail came out. Like all these emerging things that are normal now were all coming out and you never knew what thing was BS. You never knew what thing was going to be the future and awesome. And so I just started absorbing everything and I never stopped. Mm -hmm. So the internet cracked open learning for me in a way that accelerated my learning from then on. So um, I've had a 20 year head start against now it's normal to do that, but it wasn't when I, when it, when it, was possible when I was into it. So in, in, in around 2002, I found a website called My Personal, no, sorry, that's a different one. We'll talk about that one in a second. I found a website called familywonder.info, I-N-F-O. And I was a big skeptic. And it was basically Myers-Briggs, you know, Jungian stuff. And 
uh, but it had all a bunch of different names. They were goofy, and it, it was it was like the the craftsman was the mechanic, and you mm-hmm. know the overseer was like the 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 executive, and so it was different, right? But it had all these terms, and I'm like, you can't categorize me. I ain't categorizable. I'm my own person. I'm a very independent type, and the thought of that offended me actually, and I rejected it wholesale right off the bat. Mm-hmm. But what <laughs> happened was there was a, it, there was a link where you could take your t- your own little personality test, and it would try to tell you what you were, and and I you know I had no way of verifying if that was true or it worked, but I did it because it was fun, and I would try anything because it was the internet and it was new. I didn't care. Um, so um, basically, um, the results came back, and okay, maybe maybe not. But then it also did something else. It showed all of the people that they said were highly compatible. Mm-hmm. And, I, and like all the other people at work were taking this test too. And I knew these people. Mm-hmm. And, and so there was all of our results compiled and it grouped us by mm-hmm. compatibility. And I thought, man, what a bunch of BS, right? And then yeah. I looked at the groupings and I went, this is, this is who goes to lunch together. This group goes to lunch together. These people go to lunch together. These people, wait a second. That's eerie. No way. This is real. Mm-hmm. And then that website disappeared. And for mm-hmm. for for a while, I was like, "What, what was that? Where did that go? What? I have no idea. I I need to I need to figure this out." And I was obsessed with it from then on. And then I found family uh, my my personality dot info and Type Logic are very old sites that still exist, I believe. I know Type Logic does. Um, and I would use those. And then and then. I'm triple direct. If you guys know interaction styles, yeah, mm-hmm. right. So uh, just like Christian, there, um, I have I have an I have a craftsman, an overseer, and a, a female mentor in me, and all three of those personality types are direct. Mm-hmm. So informative is alien to me. I have no personality side to understand informative. It's alien. I can only emulate it. I can only pretend to be informative. I can only watch people that are informative and absorb their energies and project it for a while. And then I need to recharge it. And then I'm not doing, I'm left-handed, not right-handed with it. So um, a lot of the personality stuff was written informatively and it made me, it made me Mm -hmm. gag. I couldn't handle it. So can I ask you a quick question? Because, um, yeah. So part of the appeal, was it because, because you were so intrinsically tied to computers, right? It was like the first language that you saw to describe people in a more, I guess, understandable way to you. Because I know Mercer has has expressed to me that typology did that for him as well. It was like he never quite understood why people did the stuff they did until he got into typology. And in that way, I understood the appeal to him because to to me, it it didn't appeal to me as much. If if anything, he kind of like brought me along on the journey. You know, so mm-hmm. I, I'm just tagging along, but we're natural skeptics, <laughs> right? Right. So, like, I understand that appeal of like not knowing why people do the stuff they do, and kind of finally having the language to describe these things. Like, right. I I get that way of uh, thought because Mercer has described the same way. So, yeah, I mean, for me, that, I just got mm-hmm. Go we were at work together, um, and how I got into typology, I was just I don't know, I'm just a self development junkie. I just just like yeah. for me, life just means you have to become better. If you're not becoming better, like there's something wrong with you. So I just took a test and it came back uh, 16 personality type ENTJ. And I'm like, I read it. I'm like, yeah, this sounds like me. So I had my best friend take it and hers came back INFJ. And then I read it and I'm like, that don't sound like you. And so from there, I just started like researching a lot of stuff. I came into C.S. Joseph's um, YouTube channel, uh-huh. um, listen, uh, listened to a little bit of it. And I was like, hmm. She's INFP, right? Mm -hmm. And then from there, it kind of all spiraled until it became like this crazy obsession. But for me, I think the biggest impacts that it's had for me is just understanding um, like that, how other people feel a lot of times. Yeah, Um, That's been one of the hardest things for me. Uh, I can be to the point to where Christian can contest that I don't really care about how people feel. I just like jump straight over that. Like I don't even care. and I can like run over people, like when it comes to like 
um, that aspects of a lot of things. And I always think about things from like a perspective of system over self, right? Yeah. Um, from the perspective that um, if I can devise a system, then I don't have to worry about anything else. And and for me, I feel like I've had, always had like shortcomings, right? And that I wasn't so great. So that's what leads me more into more systematic thinking because I'm like, okay, I suck here. And, but if I devise a system, I can basically get over my weaknesses. Absolutely. So, um, when I came into typology, it really helped me to like, per se, understand people. It helped me understand that I didn't even know how my mom felt. Here I was right. like 25 years old. I ne didn't even think about how my brother felt, my mom felt or anything like that. And I was like, I kind of had this epiphany and I was just like, holy shit. Like it, this is like huge for me. Um, right. But for me, it, it's been it's been a lot. I mean, um, I pretty much read pretty much every book typology related at this point. Um, and I mean, a lot of it's got good stuff. Some of it's got junk stuff. And yeah. I, I can play and contrast from what I know from um, interaction styles and what I've observed in the reality a lot of times. Right. Um, also, um, you know, like because a lot of stuff they say can be like even if you were to like look at socionics, I think. When I, if I read socionics, I would pick out the stuff that's true and false because there's a lot of stuff that they just jump, they just throw in there and it's not true, right? Um, uh, so and I don't care what book it is. Like you got to reject maybe like 30 to uh, to 40% of that book uh, because just this stuff just doesn't line up. Like, like I mean, I've seen um, people say, you know, David Kersey's wrong, uh, but or, or like they disagree with his work. But like when you read his book, you got to understand you know, there's probably 60% of it that is correct and 40% you got to cast away. But that's, that's saying- That's exactly what I found. And also the informative versus direct. So yeah. a lot of this stuff that was written was theories and it was written in an informative way because there were theories. And so what I did was I studied all the systems and I picked out everything that I could directly apply and directly test. And I would go field test it. And I sort of just built my own system that a triple direct person would want, or, you know, it's an action based system. It's not informative based. It's right now. How do you feel? What are you thinking? You know, what's your experience? What's your intuition? What, you know, where can we go with this? You know, where, and, and where are your traumas and how well, how well are integrated with your shadow on are you? And do you understand your, your flip side, your anima and your animus? And, you know, honestly, like, um, just the language you use, right? Um, it, it's it's it can really make a big difference in how receptive receptive people are to this knowledge. Mm -hmm. So, like before, I would say, you know, you're you're informative, not direct, and they would say, well, that's not true, and they're kind of right because they're one of their other sides could be direct. So then I changed it and said, well, you prefer to be informative over direct. And now all of a sudden people are responding well and they're accepting what you're saying. Mm. And mm -hmm. it's amazing how many very, very uh, not controversial things in my mind I would bring up to people and they would get um, strong emotions about. But one of the things that I've said to, I mean, thousands of people at this point that I always thought I would get strong reactions negatively <laughs> and I never have is I tell everybody like, if you're a guy, I say you have a girl in you. And if you're a girl, I say you have a boy in you, mm. you know, and I've never had somebody be offended. I've never had somebody say, nah, that ain't real. Nah, that ain't true. They go, oh, oh yeah. Tell me more about that. Like, yeah, yeah, no, I got the, like, and I'm like, wow. You know, it's like in the locker, you know, if you call a guy, a girl, you know, it's them are fighting words, but when you're approaching it with love, because you know, people don't care what you know till they know that they care till they know that you care. If you approach it with love and concern for the human being and you go, hey, I wanna share secrets of your soul with you that can help you navigate your relationships. Um, I remember the first time I really nailed it. It was in a McDonald's playland and my daughter was playing. She was about seven years old and there was a persuader guy, uh, ESTJ, uh, sitting there um, and he, uh, 
uh, you know, we were, he has, his kids were playing too. So we were, we were a captive audience. I had, my, this is how I got people a lot. I'd find captive audiences. I'd corner people at grocery stores that were working, but nobody was in the store. And I'd sit there and talk to them for an hour. I did this for years constantly. And so here's my next target, right? Persuader guy. For 10 minutes, I just sat there and pitched it, you know, waiting for, and waiting for the 10 minutes to get over from him to tell me everything I said that offended him or was wrong or he couldn't relate to at all. And and I, I go ahead and give him a chance and the guy starts crying. And and I'm like, bro, I'm so I'm so sorry. What what did I say to he's like, nothing. You didn't say anything. And I, I said, well, what's wrong? And he said, you know me better than any of my friends. I get that same thing. Any of my family. <laughs> same thing. And I've been trying to tell them these things. And I just validated him. Like society is trying to tell you all the time that the thing you're weak at is the thing you need to focus on. Personality says you're one thirty second of the pie. You, you mostly don't see reality. We don't see most of reality. We don't see half of reality. We don't see a quarter of reality. We see a fraction of reality and we need each other to see the rest. And that, that fraction that's ours, if, if it's righteous, if, if there's nothing wrong with it, if it just irritates people, it's not bad. You have a right to irritate people if you're, what you're doing is not wrong. That's mm-hmm. what free speech is all about. But but society is constantly hammering us for not being good enough, not being better enough, not being right enough. Oh, oh, you, you know, I know you're great at math, but you suck at, at English. You got to go focus on your English. So this is what it's like a psyops campaign to make us all feel insecure. Yeah. And I break that and I say, no, this is how you're wonderful. This is how you're amazing. Don't let anybody ever tell you you can't be like this. You have a right to be this way. Now, don't use it for wrong because that's wrong. But this can be done rightly. And overseers are my opposing type. They're the type that I can love the most and hate the most. Hmm. And for a long time, I didn't think I'd ever like an overseer. And eventually, I studied so many overseers that I found out, you know what? Every overseer does this thing that irritates me. Every single one of them. Now, is that on them or is that on me? Maybe I need to thicken up my skin and maybe I need to be more accepting because I'm never going to change one of these people to not be this way. I'm never going to be able to convince them it's wrong to be this way. They couldn't stop doing it to save their lives. So I said, I accept you for this. I accept you for this and this and this. And oh, by the way, now you have to accept me for this. I'm sorry. I know it might irritate you a little bit, but... It's my right, and that's not my purpose, but I have to be me. And so we all have to know ourselves and be ourselves and make allowances for each other and our differences because collectively, we can see the whole picture. But separately, we're, our view is very narrow. You know, it's like in, in there's studies that show that a person that is constantly exploring and looking for the things they don't know is better off than the person that thinks they know everything and is in their own head thinking, I'm smart, I'm going to figure it all out. Mm-hmm. That means most of what we what's out there is out of our cognitive awareness. And we need to open our minds and open our hearts to others and their way and their point of view. And I'm telling you, a small child offering me their point of view perspective can be worth a million dollars to me. It doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how smart you are. You can see into a part of reality I cannot And now I can look through your eyes and see what I don't see. Because a fool says, I know everything. But a wise person, well, he doesn't know everything or she. But what what do they know? They know what they don't know. A wise person knows what they don't know. And I know I'm not an examiner. I'm not a defender. I'm not a mentor. I have three personalities out of the 16. And two of them are minors. So... I know craftsmen. That's what I really know. And that's very limited. And I need to know much more about what other people, what's going on in their minds. So at first, you know, a lot of my personality style was to project what I knew and then for you to tell me how I'm full of it. But I was learning. Now I don't do that. 
now I reach into people. I feel their, I feel their um, energies and I guide them through a process, an internal process for themselves. And I walk them through these things and I can demonstrate to them that this is real. In five minutes, I can do it. Because um, that's the first step is you have to convince people in the sea of BS about all this, that you know this is the segment of this that is actually real.